Hello everyone, welcome back to the Korean Keto Guy channel and yes, today I have another how-to video for you all. And you know, this how-to video obviously has a special place in my heart because it's kimchi jjigae, all right guys? I'm gonna show you guys how to make kimchi jjigae. If you're Korean or if you know about Korean food, it's like a, a staple that it's just a must have, right? Now, it's one thing to go to the restaurant and order it, and another and a whole other thing to make it at home. But I'm gonna show you guys kind of more or less how I do it. And quite frankly, you know, I'm more of a, hey, less is more, or keep it simple, not overcomplicate things. And, you know, it just comes out okay, right? And I'm gonna show you that method today, right? So what I have for you all here today, um, in terms of the ingredients. So when I stopped by the Korean market uh, to do my Korean mukbang video or the more like a Korean market review video. I actually also picked up some of this. This is sangyeopsal, or basically it's, you know, in English it's just gonna be pork belly, right? Um, relatively thick slices of pork belly. But this is gonna be my meat that I'm gonna use in the kimchi jjigae. Uh, you could probably use any beef, quite frankly, or any kind of meat, but I like tejigoi or I like pork belly the best. So that's why I'm going with that. Now, for me, the most interesting part about kimchi jjigae it's gonna be this okay I'm gonna put this over here so it's probably easier to see but this is leftover kimchi you heard me right that's right so if you have leftover kimchi or old kimchi that you just frankly didn't use this is the best use in my opinion um, of it right because with this now you can make kimchi jjigae and generally speaking older more fermented kimchi makes for better kimchi jjigae anyways so yeah guys that's what I have, right? Now, if you're wondering why I have two containers, it's because one of them is like your normal style of kimchi that's been here forever, which is perfect timing now to make kimchi jjigae. And then the other one is a specific kind. It's called chongak kimchi. I actually made a video, which I'll post maybe, I keep pointing, but yeah, I'll post the link up here that um, I, uh, it's one of my most favorite kimchis. I did one when I was still in New York at the H Mart. But anyways, that's what this one is. And this is also pretty old, so it's going to be a mixture of two kimchis. And that's the beauty too, is that you can do all kinds of kimchi, it doesn't matter. If it's old, you can use it. And then, last but not least, I do have a big pot, right? So generally speaking, I like to use a relatively big pot. If it's too small, then you have room for mistake, not mistakes, but then it doesn't have enough room, I should say, to kind of do its thing and it'll spill and make a big mess. But anyways, I got my big pot here. I'm going to go ahead and set the temperature to... Now this is an electric stove, so I just set it to number eight. That's kind of like my default. So I'm assuming that's more like a medium to high heat. And that's pretty much it. Um, just kidding guys, that's not pretty much it. But what I'll do is, you know, for the sake of time and not just bore you guys while things are heating up, um, I'll just sort of kind of like cut and paste videos. So yeah, okay guys, I'm back. And I've let the pot kind of just heat up a little bit, maybe a few minutes. The first thing, in my opinion, to do is you're gonna throw the meat right in right so I got my pork belly here it's actually still frozen so you can hear that knock right so here's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna tear it open nothing fancy and you know it's this stuff freezes really well because look you know it doesn't really stick now if it's really frozen rock hard and can't even pull it like I'm doing you can let it sit out for a little bit you know maybe like not too long because it's pork but you can let it sit out and then that way it gets a little more malleable or a little more like flexible so check this out so it's heating up now I'm gonna go ahead and just throw in pieces in here like this all right and it doesn't have to be perfect like look there you go just gonna throw it in wow this, look, this is coming apart way too easily usually it doesn't come out like this so I'm getting real lucky today guys Wow, look at that. It is literally just coming out. Wow, I've never had that happen. Look, individual pieces. Must be my lucky day. I'm just going to throw them in there. And that is it. So now that we got it thrown in there, we're going to mix it around and essentially stir fry it. And I'm going to obviously wash my hands because I just touched pork. Uh, but since we just touched pork, and we want to wash, we want to make sure you wash, you know, we wash our hands, right? <laughs> Very well. 
pork and chicken, as we all know, those are the ones where we want to avoid contaminating things at all costs. So now that we got my hands nice and clean, I'm gonna use a wooden one here. And we're just gonna stir it around. Wow. It's already cooking pretty fast. I should probably also probably stand this way as well so you guys can kind of see what I'm doing. Instead of having my back, my back face towards you all. Actually. That's a bit, that's better guys, look. Now you can see me kind of just stirring it. I'm basically just literally stir frying it until, until it gets a little cooked. And the great thing that I love about pork belly, even if it's frozen, it cooks fast. Like look, it's already pretty much browning up and cooking. So it's not one of those things that takes absolutely forever, like big chunks of beef, you know? So we're gonna let that cook for a few minutes and then that's when we can go ahead and throw in all that old kimchi. So I'll be right back. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, so it's been cooking for a, maybe like three or four minutes literally and it's already been pretty nicely browned up. I shouldn't say browned up, but it's like nicely cooked. As a matter of fact, you guys can take a quick peek there. Look, it's pretty much cooked. And this is really forgiving because once it's cooked, honestly, even when you throw in the kimchi, it's still gonna be boiling and cooking. So it's like, it's gonna continue to do its thing. But now is the time where if you got it, go ahead and throw this in, right? So I'll show you all. We're gonna start off with my just normal, kind of your run-of-the-mill kimchi. We're gonna just dump it right in. Oh yeah. Oh, and then my favorite, the chunga kimchi, right? Oh, I can already, the smell is already getting to me, so. Then you can throw this bad boy in here. Okay. And then from here, we're just gonna stir, basically stir the kimchi in, right? Kind of make sure it gets in between all the meat. There we go. Oh yeah, this is gonna come out great. Oh yeah, the pork belly is already absorbing that red color and it's already turning red. It is gonna be Fantastic once it simmers and boils, so you know it's gonna be good. And just to show you all before I cover it up, obviously I don't want to spill it, but you can see it's just all right in there. It's like a big chili, if you will. <laughs> a Korean chili, right? And then that's pretty much it, right? So I'm gonna let it simmer and boil for approximately 10 minutes. You can do this longer, shorter. Honestly, once the meat is cooked, it's fair game. That's that's how I see it, right? Um, so I'm gonna let it do its thing and uh, we'll take a look at it after, let's call it 10 minutes. A few moments later. All right guys, I have to I have an update for you all. You guys are not gonna believe this, but long story short, while I was waiting here for 10 minutes for this to simmer, I saw how much empty space was left in this big pot. And I saw in my fridge that I also had this ginormous cabbage, like the Korean cabbage you make kimchi from. 
like just sitting there and I thought to myself, I'm gonna dump that in. So that's exactly what I did. I should have filmed it, but I didn't. I basically got that thing, rinsed it, tore it all up. I should say I tore it all up first, then rinsed it, and then I threw it into the pot. So when I show you guys the finished product, you're gonna see like a mountain of cabbage. So that's just an update. But at any rate, it did simmer for about 10 minutes. It's about 155 right here. So I'm using these clocks here as timers, but we're gonna let this simmer for about 10 more minutes. And then I'll show you guys what it looks like after. A few moments later. All right guys, it's been a little less than the 10 minutes, but basically it is ready to go. Now it is still simmering and it is super hot, but What I can do for you guys, at least, is I'm gonna show you here really quick. Check it out. Oh, if you can hear it bubbling, I'm gonna tilt it just enough. Oh yeah, guys. So yeah. But everyone, that's pretty much it. That's how you make homemade kimchi jjigae. Uh, basically, throw it all in, kind of cook the meat, use your best judgment, kind of give, you know, 10 minutes apart for each cycle or each thing you throw in. But that's pretty much it, guys. Of course, I'll also make sure to show you guys this dish while I'm eating it in another video. But if you like this video, please give it a big thumbs up, like the video, subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already. And yeah, guys, if you like this kind of stuff, let me know down in the comments. Uh, I really enjoy making these videos or the how-to series, so let me know. But yeah, with that said, everyone stay safe and I'll see you all next weekend. Take care, everybody.